Hi everyone, in this video we are gonna learn 12 Blender shortcuts every beginner has to know about. If you are launching Blender for the first time, you might be overwhelmed by the amount of things that are happening in the viewport, the icons, grids, numbers, colors. I know the first thought you might have is simply closing the software, deleting it from your system and never coming back. That's actually what happened to me when I launched Blender for the first time. But let's take it easy. In this video, I really want to show you the most crucial shortcuts and tools that will allow you getting smoothly into Blender, learning it step by step and actually harnessing this amazing piece of software that is available for free and allows you creating really, really amazing stuff. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. The first shortcuts we're going to cover will be the viewport navigation. So when you launch Blender for the first time, this is something you will see. And to rotate the 3D viewport, you just need to press your middle mouse button. To pan around the viewport, you hold your shift key and then press the middle mouse button. By the way, you can see all the shortcuts I'm using here in the bottom right corner. So shift middle mouse button to pan around middle mouse button to rotate. By the way, you can also click those icons here with your left mouse button and do the same kind of operations. To zoom in, zoom out, you just use your mouse scroll. So in case you don't have mouse, you can easily help yourself with those icons here. As soon as you know how to navigate in the viewport, you need to know how to move things around. So if you can see this orange outline, that means an object within the viewport is selected. So to move it around, I'm gonna press the G key and G stands for grabbing. So it's easier for you to memorize that shortcut. Now, when I press R, that stands for rotation. So we can rotate the selected object this way. The other shortcut is S which stands for scaling. So G R S. This will be the probably most uh, often used shortcuts in Blender. So I suggest memorizing them very, very well. G R S. Now, since you already know how to navigate through the viewport and how to move things around, let's learn a little bit more about the menus. So here on the left, we have this toolbar and when I left click and hold, you can see I can expand it. So the tools, the shortcuts from the previous step, we can also access them here. When I click the move tool and left click and hold one of the arrows, I'm moving my cube around. Same thing happens when I click rotate and left click somewhere around those circles I can see here. Now when I hit the N key, you can see there is another menu appearing on the right. So N stands for the right hand menu and the T stands for the left hand menu. This is the easiest way to memorize it. So on the right hand menu, when I press the N key, you can see the location, rotation and scale properties. So when I left click my mouse button, hold it and move left or right, I can also change those transformation values. So for example, if I want to reset the position and rotation of my object, I can simply type zero everywhere here and the object will be set back to its original location and rotation. These few shortcuts we've just covered are the heart of Blender, are the most essential shortcuts. So if you're completely new to the software, I would suggest just spending a few more minutes and playing around the viewport, grabbing, rotating and scaling the objects. And when you feel comfortable with everything, let's just keep going. To select any object in Blender, we simply hover our mouse cursor over it and left click. And you may wonder, like, why are you even covering this? This is quite obvious. It's 
the same way in any other application. Well, not really. Blender was famous for having the right click select for many, many years. And some people still do it the old school way, but we're gonna stick to the defaults. In order to increase your selection, you simply hold the shift key and then left click around any other object. So with your entire selection, you can still use the R, G, S shortcuts, as you can see. So what happens when I right click? Well, In Blender 2.80, clicking the right mouse button gives me an access to the quick menu and the content of that menu changes depending on the object type I have selected. So it's a bit different for a camera, a bit different for a lamp and a bit different for a regular object. So right mouse click, I still consider it a new shortcut in Blender. The sixth shortcut every Blender beginner has to know about is how to duplicate objects and we use Shift D for that. So everything I have selected, when I press Shift D, it will duplicate. D stands for duplication. So when I increase my selection right now and press Shift D again and again and again, well, I'm duplicating everything. But what if I want to have something more interesting than just a cube? Well... The seventh shortcut you have to know about as Blender Beginner is Shift A. So that gives us an access to the Add menu. The probably most often used category will be the Mesh, where you have access to different geometry elements. So if we want to create a cone, it's not visible, but we can see it's actually hidden within the cube. So when I press the G key, you can see it moves around. I press Shift A again and select Monkey. This is the most famous 3D model you'll have in Blender. It's a Suzanne Monkey. You now know how to add objects in Blender. Let's learn how to delete them. This is where shortcut number eight comes into play and it's an X key. When I press it with my object selected, you can see this OK menu appearing and it asks us for confirmation. When I select an object and press the delete key, well, Blender won't even ask. That's why I suggest using the X key. It's just a little bit safer. Let's say you have many objects like I do and you would like to select them all. You press A key. Now, if you want to deselect everything, you press Alt A. Let's say you have many, many objects, but you only want to select a few of them. So we have a box selection tool for that, which is hidden under the B key. And that's a shortcut number 10. You can also box deselect things and to do that you press B and then press your middle mouse button, drag holding it and release to deselect. Now, if you're a Mac user who can't afford to buy himself a decent mouse with a middle mouse button, there's also a solution for you. In the toolbar on the left, you can see we have this mouse cursor icon selected and it's actually a select box tool by default. When I left click and hold, you can see I'm able to select different selection methods, but let's just stick to the select box. Here on top, I'm able to select a subtract option. So right now, when I left click, hold and drag, I'm able to, well, do basically the same what people with a decent mouse can do in Blender. When you have many, many, many objects in Blender, uh, selecting them becomes quite problematic. So 
we can help ourselves by in changing the way the viewport is working. To do that, I'm gonna press the Z key and from here you can see I have this shading menu. So when I select the wireframe view, for example, now I can see kind of through all of the objects within my scene and let's say move the selection knowing what's happening. Within the Z menu, we also have different shading um, methods, but I'm not gonna cover them right now. It's a little bit more advanced. And the final shortcut you have to know about as a Blender beginner is how to hide and unhide objects. So when I select anything within my viewport and I press H key, this hides everything. To unhide my objects, I'm gonna press Alt H. So what else I can do with hiding the objects, when I want to keep this for cubes visible only, I'm gonna press Shift H. So Alt H to unhide, just H to hide, and Shift H hides everything except of my selection. So there you have it. 12 shortcuts every Blender beginner has to know about. Thank you guys and those few girls for watching. I really hope this video was informative. If you're new to this channel, you might check out the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course, which I've been recording for the past couple of weeks. The course consists of 20 videos and is about seven hours long, which might be a little bit overwhelming, but most people finish it within just seven or even two days. But I'm also not rushing any of the subjects I'm covering within this course because I really want to make sure you learn the basics correctly and you're able to create your own simple 3D models and scenes within Blender just by the end of video 20. So yeah, just check it out. You can also visit the Chocofour store where we have over 200 free assets for Blender professionals and hobbyists and over 1500 commercial Blender assets that support professional creative Blender community. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.